do my line guys welcome back to another video to all of my returning subscribers you are new here and this is the first time that you are seeing my face and hi hello welcome to my channel my name is Anna Pukov and I am an English teacher in South Korea so guys before we get into today's topic first things first please make sure that one you have subscribed to the channel and it is free of charge <laughs> number two make sure that you have clicked the notification bell so you know every time i post a video which is weekly and then number three do give this video a thumbs up you've already clicked on the video so why not <laughs> So guys, today we are talking about all of the documents that you need in order to come and teach English in South Korea. The documents that I'm about to give you guys and just tell you guys about are in no specific order. So what I mean by that is, doesn't mean that I list a specific one first. That is the one that you need to start getting together. Uh, they are in no specific order. I'm just going to list them all and then give you obviously some information about each one and um, do's and don'ts for each one. So yeah, guys, um, let's get into it. <laughs> obviously a form that you're gonna need to fill in and this is the epic application form whether you are applying directly to epic or you are applying to epic through an agency everybody will be filling in an epic application form now this application form um you're going to fill it in online on the epic website it's not something that you can print off handful in and then send to epic no you will be filling it in online digitally which is perfect guys some of us don't have the best handwriting so if you were to write it by hand and you know some people are going to have to assume what you were trying to say and it's incorrect so you're going to be completing it online digitally which is perfect. Then, um, when it comes later on in the process, once you've had your interview, they tell you that you've passed and you need to send all of your documentation either to your agency or to EPIC themselves. Um, the application form is one of the documents you're going to need to print off, sign, and then courier to South Korea or your agency. But please do not just do electronic signature, digital signature, and then print it and send it. There's a reason they're leaving this thing for last for you to sign at the very end once you have passed the interview. They want a physical hand signature. If you do not have a hand signature, you're just going to delay the process because they're going to say, we need a hand signed application form and you're going to need to query it again, which is another fee. And I'm speaking from experience. The first time I forgot to sign my application form. So I had to send it a second time. So that was two Corey expenses that I needed to pay. So please hand sign your application form. And when you do then send things off, make sure that every single page is there and you're not missing anything. All right, cool. Then next. You're going to need two recommendation letters. Now, these need to be from people that you either worked for or studied um, or studied under. So either you worked for them or you studied under them. So this means that it cannot be your friend, your sister, your mother. Like it cannot be private letters from people that you have um personal relationships with that's a no now you may be asking okay and i am part of a sports club where i coach um you know soccer leagues or i am part of the worship team i'm a worship team leader at church or a sunday school teacher or sunday school um leader you know team leader those are also acceptable so i used to teach sunday school i was a sunday school teacher so I definitely put that in there. Um, but yes, that would be acceptable. The other thing that you need to know about your recommendation letters is they need to be written on a company letter head. So if you're getting your lecturer to write you this letter, then the university letter head needs to be on that letter. Or if you're getting your 
um, employer to write it for you, your manager, your team leader, your supervisor. It needs to be on the company letterhead. Now, you might be asking me, Anna, but what if the people that I work for, um, they can't give me a letterhead or don't want to or don't have one? Hopefully, they have one. <laughs> but it's not a problem. In that instance, what you'll do is they'll obviously write up the letter for you without the letterhead. But then you would need to submit the business card along with the letter. So they should have a business card. So get them to do a business card and give you that business card and you can submit the two together. Another important point on the recommendation letters is it needs to be originals. So meaning they also need to be hand signed, a hand signature. They cannot give you electronic signature because Epic is going to want to see the original and hand signed. So whether they type it online for you digitally, that's fine. But once they print it, they must sign it by hand for you. And if I were you, I would print off two, three, or even four copies and then they hand sign all of them. So you've got four hand signed copies just in case you want to apply elsewhere in the near future. But also make sure that you've got the digital copy as well. Once you've signed it, once they've signed it, um, make a digital copy for yourself as well. But yeah, just for future reference, if you need another recommendation letter, you've still got this one. Talking about future reference, the recommendation letter does need to be dated. You need to have the date of when it was obviously signed, so the date. And with this being said, dated, you also need to make sure that by the time that you arrive in South Korea, that that letter is not older than two years. Um, what else do you guys need to know with regards to the letter? So in that letter, the person that you have asked to write a recommendation, they need to recommend you. So they need to give the context in which they know you. Um, so obviously they're going to say, I am an a supervisor um, or team leader or manager at one, two, three, or I am her lecturer, one, two, three. So they need to give context as to how they know you. They need to describe your character, your work ethic, your English ability, general attributes. So they are motivating why EPIC should hire you to be an English teacher in South Korea. This is important. That is what a recommendation letter is. So make sure that you give it to somebody who knows you very well and would be able to write a recommendation letter. So they're just going to explain why they think that you'll be perfect to teach English in South Korea is ideally what's happening in that recommendation letter. Um, as for the language, it can be written in English or Korean, but don't now send them a letter that's written Gaspedi or Ga French or it's not going to work. <laughs> ah, but yeah, guys, that's what you need to know about that. Let me see if there's any other important. Oh, they need to state your name in the letter. And when they state your name, they need to write it the exact same way that it's written in your ID. So if your ID says Mapule Ana Pugube, then that needs to say exactly that in your letter. It cannot say if your name is Tabo um, Elliot Rangaga. They can't say Tabo only. So in the first sentence line, they need to have your full name and then obviously they can just use the name that they prefer later on but they need to have your full name in there. Awesome. And then obviously when they sign it, it must be their full names and then also the position that they, you know, what their position is and things like that. You know, like a normal letter, when somebody signs it at the bottom, in a little title, the signature, all that important information must be there. Okay, so that is the two recommendation letters you need to. Oh, and it mustn't be, um, addressed to anyone specific. Let's say, for example, you will be applying to, through an agency. Don't have that letter to address your agency. Um, and also, I wouldn't say dear Epic in it. So don't have them specifically um, address it to Epic because, like I said, if you wanted to use this letter for your next ESL job somewhere else, 
let it be able to, you know, you must be able to use that letter again. Just my tip for you. <laughs> cool. Next document that you need is a proof of schooling letters. So you need letters to prove that you were taught in English. So you would need one from your primary school and you would need one from your high school. So those letters, it's just a general letter where are they just going to confirm that you've been taught from this grade to this grade in English, so primary school, and then high school, this grade to this grade um, in English. If you have gone to multiple schools, get the letters from all of those schools, primary and high school. Um, and this is not for all countries. Um, with South Africa, I will be speaking from a South African context. For us, it's important because we have schools that teach in other languages. So, for example, you can go to a school where they taught you in Afrikaans or Zulu. or We have 11 official languages. So, that is why, as South Africans, these two um, letters, primary school, high school, are also important. They need to prove that you've been raised speaking English everywhere that you went in your life. <laughs> it's the purpose of this letter. Um, what else? Again, it must include your full legal name as it appears on your ID when they write that letter for you. They need to also confirm the dates. So when you started at that school to when you finished at that school. So the timeline and obviously the grades. So in my letter, I would say this is confirmed that Anna was taught in English, that Anna Mapule Pugua was taught in English at Cliffy Primary School um, from grade one in whatever year it is to grade seven whatever year it is so that's the information that needs to be there and obviously again it needs to be signed with my school letters i didn't um i wasn't too concerned about a hand signature because i was just like hey man this is a school one i don't think it and epic didn't say the original letter um it did say you can you can uh, you need to submit a scan or a digital copy so um for me i didn't do a hand one uh, my schools are far. <laughs> so I just sent them an email I'm like, hi, please can you guys provide me a letter confirming the below? And then I did advise them that listen, make sure that you use my full legal name, make sure that the letter's dated, please make sure that it's on the school letterhead, please make sure um, that there's a signature. Um, what else did I ask them to do? Please make sure that you confirm the year and the grades that I was at your school during that time so give them all of that criteria to make sure that you don't there's not this back and forth of things that it's all there in one letter awesome then the next documents that you're going to need is you're going to need color photographs so you know those id pictures that you take for your id or your passport please take don't just have one or two have like i took six pictures one went to my passport and then I had to submit one with my EPIC application form. It was, and then I also need to submit one for my visa. So make sure that you've got a couple for when you're doing the various documentation while in South Africa, but also bring the photos with you for the things that you're gonna do here in South Korea, like your ARC. It's also going to want your photo. Awesome. Um, I don't think I need to give you much information there. You guys know when you're taking your photo for your ID, the requirements on that. Just remember it needs to be color awesome and good quality <laughs> um then um you may need to scan your passport so that's also another thing that you're going to need to send through to epic is your passport copy um i don't need to go into detail there um and please it needs to be valid guys if you're there's no point in your contract, I mean, your passport expiring in four months and you're signing a contract for a year or you plan to be abroad for longer than a year, but then your passport is going to be expiring in a year. So just make sure that your passport is up to date and it's valid. So when you're giving them that passport copy, they also see that, okay, this person will be able to stay in our country for 12 months. So that's on the passport scan. Um, academic records so now you need your university transcripts and these need to be sealed ne? they need to be sealed and you need two sets of sealed transcripts guys so 
um when you apply you can obviously just send in the digital copies you should have digital copies you can just send that that's when they just check that you meet the requirements and you are eligible to teach in south korea that you are qualified so that's the beginning then um when you send your documents to korea so once you have passed the interview stage and so once you've passed the interview stage they are going to have to say okay bring us a documentation bring us all the documents and that's when you will send your sealed transcripts i can't understand why they need to because i remember when i careered i anyway the, the requirement was two sealed transcripts i sent to awesome the next one is your criminal record so police clearance now, with the police clearance, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your local police station. You're going to apply for your police clearance, get your fingerprints done. They obviously follow a certain process to get that to you. Remember that the police clearance can take, let me say, six to ten weeks. So when you go and apply for your police clearance, please have this in mind that this is how long that it takes, six to ten weeks. Um, and then also, another important thing to note with the police clearance is that it's valid for six months and by the time that you get to south korea you arrive in south korea that police clearance must still be valid so next is your degree there's two things that you got to do with your degree guys the first point is you need to verify your degree through sakwa so this is just going to go to SACWA. You're going to email SACWA. They then are going to contact university and verify that you did graduate from them and it's a valid degree, things like that. So that's what happens with SACWA. Once you've got your verified degree, it's then going to go to DOCO. You're going to send it off to DOCO and DOCO is then going to apostle your degree. But when you send your verified degree from SACWA to DOCO, along with it, you would need to send your police clearance to DOCO as well. The two need to get apostled by DOCO. And that is what EPIC wants. EPIC doesn't want your original degree. EPIC wants a verified degree from SACWA. So you're just going to send a copy of your degree, a digital copy to SACWA. SACWA is going to verify it. There's a verification letter that they will produce. Once that verification letter is done, you're going to take your police clearance and your verified letter from SACWA and the two go to DOCO and then DOCO will apostle those for you, which you can then take the apostle document to South Korea when you courier your documents. Good? Cool. Um, I will give you guys the steps down below on what to do with SACWA just in case you guys want to know. And there are costs involved. As you know, these things are not mahala. <laughs> so that's Doko. Um, with Doko, you know, there's two ways of doing these things. Um, you can either go yourself to the various offices to get these done, or you can use a courier service, Postnet. I use Postnet to get um, my documents verified in Doko. It's easier. Because also I was working at the time, I didn't have the flexibility to go do the up and downs. So yeah, after the verified degree by SACWA and the apostled degree by um, DOCO, we then move on to um, TEFL certificate. Let's, you need your TEFL certificate. So... For everybody, your, if your degree is in education and you have a teacher's licensee, we're not with But if you don't have a bachelor's in education, um, like myself, you're going to need a TEFL certificate. So make sure that you get that done. The, now, the TEFL certificate, it does not need to be apostled or verified. You can just send EPIC the electronic copy of your um, TEFL certificate. Um, and then also bring a physical copy with you. So always have digital and physical copies. It's a good idea. Um, just in case you didn't know your TEFL certificate, make sure that the hours for your TEFL certificate is at least 100 hours. Anything under that, it's not sufficient. You need to at least be at 100 hours above. Awesome. Uh, na, na, na. Um, for the teacher's license, people, so if you have a teacher's license, you're obviously just going to send your scanned copy to EPIC, bring your physical license with you. This is for the licensed teachers. Okay. 
Okay. Then what else? If you are a licensed teacher and you have teaching experience, um, then they, you must have proof, proof of teaching experience. Um, so I didn't need to do this because I didn't have teaching experience, but you would need to provide proof of teaching experience, which they call PTE, so PTEs, which is a proof of teaching experience letter, which must be on official letterhead, um, dated, state your full name as per your ID, um, and then obviously state if your employment is full-time, part-time, duration of your employment at that school, what grades you were teaching, grades or levels, subjects that you taught, all that important information. Um, now, they don't want you to give a letter from the co-worker, so from your colleague, no. Um, it must be issued by your school's administrative office. School administration office, guys. We're now going to go into an additional document, um, which is the residence certificate. So if you want to be exempt from paying tax um, as a South African in South Korea, um, you need to be teaching at a public school for this tax exemption. And you're going to need to bring along with you the tax residence certificate. So the residence certificate, so the RC01 certificate from SARS. So by handing this in, you will then be exempt from paying tax. Please note that tax exemption is only valid for two years. After your second year here in Korea, you will start needing to pay tax. Um, I will give you guys the email address for SARS. So you're just going to email SARS and say you want the residence certificate um, you're going to send the form, you have to complete a form along with your ID. They will then email you this letter and then you can give this to your school when you arrive. But yeah, I think that is everything. Those are all of the documents that you need. Um, this was just to let you guys know the documents. <laughs> um, but while we are speaking about the documents, if you want to know how you can um maximize your chances of securing your contract there are three things that's applying early so apply as, as soon as you can so with the positions at epic it's first come first serve so as soon as you can get that application done get on your documents because also if they let's say you apply first of august applications for february 2023 open now first of august so guys apply and if you have any questions let me know down below so if you apply early your chances are better than if you had applied later but even if you apply early um you obviously then once you've passed the interview you need to send your documentation to south korea to epic and if your documents aren't ready that also delays the process but somebody else could apply um, a few weeks after you or a month after you and they have all their documents and it goes so first come first serve so make sure that you get things done quicker then the other thing is apply accurately so make sure that when you are filling in your application form that you are intentional about what you're writing make sure that you filled in every single section to the t try not try don't make any errors because if you make errors or something's missing now epic must send you back and say we still need it's an issue or please fix make sure that you are very accurate with all of with each stage of this application process from documents interviews all of it make sure that you hit the nail on the head to avoid any delays and backs and forths and extra expenses like me forgetting to sign my application form and needed to now courier document again and spend more money um another thing that i can say to increase your chances is um being flexible so in the application form it does ask you um the city that you would like to be placed in to teach english um you can then write the soul or whatever it is wherever it is jeju island wherever it is that you want to go and teach um and obviously first come first serve so if they if your application is through and if your documents are there then they will they should give it to you because first come first serve is what they say <laughs> but let's say all of those spots in jeju or seoul or whatever you wrote down as your preference has been filled up 
um then epic might think ah this one if they don't get sold like they requested on here um they may retract the application so let's rather go with the person who noted flexible because then for them it doesn't matter where they go so let's take this person so that's just something for you to think about but yeah guys i really hope that you found this video helpful um, if you have any questions, please do note that down below. Or if you have any specific video requests on what you would like me to film for you guys, comment down below and I will get to that. I hope that you guys are having a lovely day wherever you are and have an amazing week further. Bye! <laughs> I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away. I let my head down if I want